YouTubers, what's up? I've been getting a lot of questions about my oven, so I thought I'd make a short video about it. I did not build this oven. It was built by a buddy of mine down the street. He is a machinist. Um, I think it's at an aerospace company or somewhere. This guy's good with everything he does. He's a um, very meticulous, very smart guy. Um, he really knows what he's doing when he's building things like this. Um, he basically took an existing oven, uh, like a household oven, and all of its innards and took the electronics out and then put it into this oven. I'm gonna remove this panel so you guys can see what's behind it. Um, again, I may not necessarily know what everything is called back there, but you guys that are trying to build your own, you can look at it and decipher what you think, um, what you think it is and what it needs. Um, I wish I could knew more about it so I could explain it better. But either way, I'll take it out for you guys. All right, I got the panel off. I'll just kind of pan around in here um, so you can kind of see everything that's going on in here. Sorry about the glare. Um, so like I said, he, he just took the existing uh, stuff out of an oven and um, just set it up in this box on the side. Um, there is the... Uh, temperature control in there. Um, I'm not sure. I think it's just set uh, hot all the time. Um, he ran it to the front on this panel right here. Uh, it's got a main switch, so when I power it on, uh, I just flick the switch up, it'll come on. Uh, this light, the green light will come on, and then the orange light will come on because it's heating up to temp. Uh, he's got a timer hooked up right here. I guess that's what this is right here, uh, the timer. It's got like an hour time limit on it, so I can, I'll turn it all the way to 60 and just let it set that way. He, I guess he just did that as a safeguard so it wouldn't get left on or, or what. So you can either, the only, only drawback to that is I have to keep remembering to come over here and turn it off up to 60, uh, just so it stays on all the time. But most of the time, uh, it's not a problem. And then, Here's where he controls the temperature. Uh, again, it looks like he um, just set it up a certain way. Like I said, you guys probably know what you're looking at. I have no idea. I'm not, I'm not very keen on, on electrical stuff. Um, but for the most part, I keep it between um, four and 500. I use a uh, thermometer to check the temp on the inside. So I uh, usually when I want to get my part up, I usually put it up here at around 450 or between the 450 and 500 and it gets the uh, temperature inside to where I need. That's pretty much it for that box. I mean, the control box just sits on the side there. Um, and then of course I've got my cord uh, coming out. It's a, uh, a four prong type uh, with the ground on top. And then it just plugs into my 220 over there in the wall. So it works, works out good for what I use it for. So if you haven't guessed it already, this, this oven used to be a, a, a file cabinet. Um, what uh, my buddy did, I'll go ahead and, his name is Alan. What Alan did was he basically just took the file cabinet. It was a four drawer file cabinet, the long, long drawers. Um, he took the drawers out and all the insides out and then um, kind of insulated it and put some uh, sheet metal on the inside. He fabricated everything, that box, uh, as you can see, it's put together with, I guess these are rivets. Um, he even made, he machined these latches. Uh, there's one on top and there's one on the bottom. Both of them work pretty good. Um, oh yeah, off the side of the box, there's a little junction box that goes down to the bottom. So on the bottom, I'll go ahead and open this up. So on the bottom, he's got a fan down there. Um, that fan just circulates the heat, so I guess it makes it a convection oven. Um, here is the um, thermostat wire uh, to know what temper it's, temperature it's at. You can still see there's some of the guides left over from the file cabinet stuff. I mean, it's still got all the little holes and stuff on the side, so it looks like what he did was he put a, a case around it. Um, so you can see this is old file cabinet construction. 
he built this this cage right here. This is what I hang all my heavy, heavy stuff on. Uh, I put this metal bar in here and hung it off some little hooks because I hang my, my little stuff off here when I when I powder. There's a vent up top to let the heat come out, so it, I guess it doesn't get too hot in there. Uh, it holds the heat pretty good. Uh, you can't see on the inside of it, but it's all insulated inside. I saw when he was putting it together, um, kind of the process of it, but uh, it came out pretty good for for what we what we're using it for. It works great. Uh, that door he built, it's just all sheet metal and then I think square, one inch square tubing, uh, steel tubing. This this thing is very heavy, um, but it's very sturdy. Uh, like it it does it does the job, and he was real, real meticulous about what he, what he did when he built it because you can't even see any weld marks anywhere. Um, it's, he's he could make a lot of money building these if he wanted to, but he just decided to build this one. Uh, I'm the lucky one that got got to buy it from him. Uh, we put this bar on the side here. This is just a little heavy duty bar I, I pulled around with. Um, the back of it is nothing spectacular. Oh, sorry about that. That's the door slam on the garage. The back of it is nothing spectacular. I mean, it's just a flat. It's just the back side of the file cabinet. Um, the size it's it's 19 inches deep. It's 35 inches wide, and then about 58 inches tall. So. Uh, about five feet tall and about 20 inches deep. So, I mean, I, I can, I can fit a lot of stuff in there. I usually put, you know, my bike frames and I've done some grill guards for four wheelers. Um, but I can't do too, too much bigger than that, but that's all I'm doing. That's all I do is build bikes and do small car parts and stuff. And of course, tumblers. So it works for what I need it for. You may have also noticed there's a hole on the front. This is a sight glass. You can kind of see through it. When the door is shut, you really can't see inside. Um, when he was building this, he put that in there. He thought maybe he'd be able to see inside, but you could probably shine a flashlight in there and try to see it, but it's it's really it's really more just cosmetic because you really can't see nothing inside there because when you put a flashlight up on the glass, it reflects back. Um, what I can do though, I might be able to shoot the, the temp gun in there and see what the temperature is. I don't know. Probably wouldn't be accurate. I'd rather open the door and do it. Um, but either way, it makes it look cool. I put the uh, the teeth on there because it reminds me of the, uh, I forgot what that character's name was from Bugs Bunny, the big hairy guy with the tennis shoes. Um, but it gave it some character. I call it Cyclops or the big monster or whatever. Um, the outside of it is painted with a uh, just a rattle can, I think. We just used a... Uh, high temp black paint like you use on grill grill paint. Uh, it's held up pretty good. Um, all this white haze you see on it is all the powder that's been on there that uh, is actually just kind of adhered to it because it gets hot and that's where I guess the heat se uh, seeps out of there and I powder right next to it in, the, in that booth over there so it gets all over everything. You guys at powder know what I'm talking about. Sitting on these four four wheels on the bottom they lock. Um, his casters again he put heavy duty bases down there um, he built this thing pretty tough. Uh, I'm, real, I'm real happy with it. Uh, I don't think I'd ever get another a bigger one if, if I needed it. Because, um, like I said, this just does everything I, I need all in one. But uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, if you got questions, I'll try to answer them the best I can. Um, I still talk to Alan. He's still my neighbor down the street. I can definitely uh, get him to answer some questions, uh, maybe. Uh, I don't want to pester him. He's a real, real quiet guy. Um, but again, uh, I just really appreciate the hard work he put into this. And he sold it to me and my brother really, really cheap. Um, this probably could easily sell for a couple of grand. Um, we got it for almost half that. So, I mean, we're pretty excited to have it. And uh, it does it does good work. I mean, it's not uh, it's not perfect, but it's good for what, like I said, for what I use it for. But that's it. Uh, I've been getting a lot of messages about checking this oven out and uh, I wanted to show it to you guys. Oh, let me show you how, uh, how it comes on. So I kind of have, kind of have a mess over here because like, I'm sure like you guys get projects going on all the time. So you just plug it in, just like you would. Uh, it actually already came on. Uh, let me do this and shut it off. So. After you plug it in, 
come over here, you just hit the main power switch. That turns the fan on, and then this green power light comes on, so you can hear that fan whirring in there. The fan's on. Um, once I get it on, I'll go ahead and lock, I'd lock it down, top and bottom. Get it all locked up to hold the heat, and then once you turn the timer is when actually the heat comes on. This, is, this controls the heat too. So the orange light will come on. It'll start heating, and I'll just go ahead and get it, get it up to temp. I'm going to power to coat a uh, sprocket now. This little guy, oops, this little guy. I'm painting him uh, white for the GT project I'm working on. So I'll go ahead and get it warmed up for that. But that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, like I said, if you got questions, let me know.